Okay, let's do a frequency table with continuous numerical data. So I've got our commander set up. Let's go ahead and load our data. So I'm just going to import that car data that we've been working with for a while. Uh, I'll just name it cars data. Okay, find out exactly where my data is. Give me just a second to track it down. Okay, and we're going to open up this Excel file, car data set. I'm going to click open. I have multiple sheets on there. If you have multiple sheets on a file, you need to select which sheet your data is on. Mine's on the car data set, and I'll click OK. Great, so now we can look at the view data set. Just double check we got it set. Okay, and remember that I put in some zeros here on the number of cars. Uh, if you're curious about maybe why the number of cars don't look the same. But we're actually just going to use MPG this time. Okay, so let's go do statistics, contingents, or not, summaries. Here we go, numerical summaries. And let's grab MPG, and we're going to look at statistics. And I only need one checked. I just want the bin frequency counts right now. And I'm going to go and click OK. And if you notice, if you looked at some of my other videos, the, the output used to be a little different. It was horizontal. Um, they have actually did an update, and I didn't realize that they did an update. So I had to go back, update my R Commander package, and now it gets it into this nice format. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy this and take it over to Excel. It's actually a big improvement from what it used to be. So I'm going to paste this in. And remember, it pastes everything in this single column. Remember, we can highlight our data and then go to Data, Text to Columns. And let's do, uh, we can either do Fixed Width or Delimited. Either one will work. I'll show you how to do Fixed Width. Um, if you did delimited, it would probably be the space is the easiest one. Let's go to next, and you can see where these lines are. And if you want to change where the line is drawn, you can move it around. And I'm just going to click OK. That looks good to me. Click finish. And it separated them out very nicely. So we've got our bins. Bins, and this is NPG. Remember, we have these ranged bins because we are dealing with continuous data. And so we have to put bins where the continuous data can fall into. If it was discrete, we could just put 0, 1, 2. But because it's continuous, we need these bins. OK, so we've got our counts. We've got our total. And we've got these percentages. Let's go ahead and delete these. We're going to figure out how to do this on our own. So in order to do the percentages, we're going to say equals. Remember, the equation, let me... Let me write it over here so that we can do this. And the percent, let's actually delete that. It's This is our relative frequency. And I'll just go down here. Relative frequency equals our count or our frequency. Those are synonyms. Count divided by sample size. So we have our sample size right here. It's this 41. Um, we can actually calculate this if we do equals sum. And it is the sum of all of our counts, or all of our frequencies. I'm going to hit Enter. And let's go underneath relative frequency. Let's do this. So we say equals count divided by our sample size. And we hit Enter. There's a really handy way that we can propagate equations, and we can just drag down. But if you notice, I've got some sort of error because I get this uh, divide by zero sign. So let's double click on this and see what happened. And we see that, OK, we got the right count as we drag down, but our sample size, the cell reference, just kept on going down. We can lock a cell reference if we select on the value we want to lock, and then press F4. Uh, and that's both on Mac and PC. If you're on a Mac, you might need to push the function button and then push your F4 button. Um, but regardless, we need to get these dollar signs in front of the letter, which locks the columns, and dollar sign in front of the number, which locks the rows. So I'm going to hit Enter, and I'm going to try dragging down again. And there we go. We got our relative frequency. This last one you actually don't need. 
So we're going to delete that out. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is we want to do the cumulative frequency. And the cumulative frequency is just equal to the count that you're on plus everything above. We want to know how many people had a car with 25 miles per gallon or less. And we can answer that. So let's put that in. So this first line is just the first count. Okay. It's going to be identical because there's nothing less than in this less than five. And now we're going to say equals to, okay, the count that we're on plus the cumulative frequency above. And we'll hit enter. So it's just saying, all right, so the first one is two. Next one is nine plus two. And if we go down, it's six plus nine plus two, or we could say six plus 11. That gets us to 17. And we can drag that equation all the way down. The last one, if you've done it right, is going to be the same as the sample size because we'll have summed up the entire frequencies. Okay, our last column. We need to use cumulative relative frequency. Right, and this one is identical to the relative frequency, only this time we're going to be using the cumulative frequency for our count. So we're going to say equals cumulative frequency divided by the sample size. Don't forget to lock that cell and we hit enter. And then we can drag this all the way down and propagate it. If you've done it right, your last uh, cell should be the number one or 100%. All right, just for some housekeeping, let's go ahead and highlight this column and let's change the number of decimals here because it's annoying to see so many. We only need about three or four. So I'm just going to go underneath number or there should be a spot where we see some zeros and an arrow and we can back them down a little bit so we don't have quite so many numbers. And so this is a frequency table. Now remember, this cumulative frequency and cumulative relative frequency we need when we are dealing with ordinal data or numerical data. Nominal data it really doesn't make sense, so we can omit it from our work. So I hope this helps out.